What? Chichikov said, half awake to Selifan. What's going on? What? Selifan drawled slowly. What do you mean, what? What do you think you are, a goose? Why are we creeping along like this? Get moving. And indeed, for some time, Selifan had been driving with his eyes half closed, only now and then casually flicking the drowsy horse's flanks with the reins. Petrushka's cap had fallen off somewhere along the road, and he himself was sprawled on his back, his head resting on Chichikov's knee. Now completely awake, Chichikov got rid of it with a shove. Salafin, getting hold of himself, gave the dappled horse a few whacks with his whip, setting him off at a trot. Then, cracking the whip over all three, he shouted in a thin voice, Come on, my lovelies, which encouraged the horses, so that they pulled the carriage as effortlessly as if it were no more than a feather. For a while, Selifan just kept saying, Hup, 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 lightly waving his whip and bouncing softly on his box as the carriage flew over the hillocks strewn all along the highway. Although, generally speaking, it still retained a gentle downward slope. Chichikov smiled slightly as he bounced on his leather cushion for he loved fast driving. But what Russian doesn't like fast driving? How, with his heart always longing for a wild dash, can he refrain from crying out occasionally, Go, damn it all! How can he not like fast driving when there's something so exalted and wonderful about it? When it makes you feel as though some unseen force has swept you up and is carrying you off and you find yourself flying. Everything is flying. The milestones, the merchant's carts coming towards you. And the forest on either side is flying, too, with its rows of dark pines, its thumping axes and the cawing of its crows. The whole road is flying, God knows where, into the hazy distance. And there's something sinister about flashing past objects that disappear even before they've come into focus. And only the sky overhead, with its clouds split by the moon, appears to be standing still. Oh, Troika! Oh, bird-like Troika! Who invented you? Only a people full of life could have done so. A people that refuses to be daunted by anything. A people whose land spreads out evenly across half the world so that you may race ahead full speed and count the milestones until they flash like spots before your eyes and you grow dizzy. And to think there's nothing complicated about a troika. No screws, no metal. All it took to build it was an axe, a chisel, and a smart Russian peasant. And your driver doesn't wear fancy foreign gaiters. He's all beard and mittens, and he sits on God knows what. But now he gets up, cracks his whip, and intones a song. The horses take off in a rush. The spokes of the wheels blend into a compact circle. The road quivers. A frightened pedestrian lets out a cry. And there she goes, goes, goes. And already there's nothing to see but the dust rising in the distance. And you, Russia, aren't you racing headlong like the fastest troika imaginable? The road smokes under you, bridges rattle, and everything falls behind. A passerby stops and gapes at this miraculous vision. He wonders whether it wasn't a stroke of lightning. He ponders the meaning of this awe-inspiring speed and wonders what unknown force drives these mysterious steeds. Oh, horses! Horses! Are there cyclones concealed in your manes? Do your sensitive ears transmit fire to your very veins? No sooner do you hear the familiar song from above than the muscles of your chests of bronze become taut and hard, and barely touching the earth, you become streamlined, a flow of air, and the whole troika flies along inspired by God. And where do you fly to, Russia? Answer me. She doesn't answer. The carriage bells break into an enchanted tinkling. The air is torn to shreds and turns into wind. Everything on earth flashes past and casting worried, sidelong glances, other nations and countries step out of her way 